Christian leaders. My name is Carmela Murray. I am second vice president at Ward AME and your second vice president of the SCA CLO. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Um, firstly, we will have our praise and worship, the melodic singing of this Holy Ghost praise team. Yeah. Hallelujah. And um, then we'll have our doxology. Sister Francis, will you join me? Sister Francis will bring our protocol, and after that, we will have our litany from Sister Barbara McFeeters of First Day of Me, Pasadena. Amen. Blessed be the ties that bind our hearts with Christian love and fellowship this evening. Good evening. It is an honor and a pleasure to present the protocol this evening. To Bishop Clement W. Few, the 131st elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church and the prelate for the 5th Episcopal District in absentia, and Supervisor Alexia Butler Few. Connectional Officer, Sister Jackie DuPont Walker, the Director of Social Action Commission. Host Presiding Elder, Reverend Roosevelt Lindsay, LA South Las Vegas District, in Ascension. Host Presiding Elder, Reverend Dr. Alan L. Williams, LA North District. District Officers, Judy Bradley for the 5th District Lay Organization Treasurer. Angela Boskett, second Vice President for 5th District Lay Organization. And yours truly, 5th District Correspondent Secretary for the 5th District Lay Organization. Southern California Conference Lay Organization President, Mrs. Kathy Green. Southern California Conference Lay Organization Director of Lay Activities, Kimberly Boyd Walker. Southern California Conference Lay Organization Young Adult Representative, Gertrude Martin. And to the host pastor of this great church, Reverend Dr. Larry E. Campbell, and to First Lady Melinda Campbell in Ascension. Host Lay Organization President, Laura Terry. Host Chairperson, Barbara McPeters. Host Co-Chair, Darlene Anderson. All officers and members of Fame Pasadena. All visiting pastors, ministers, laity, and visitors. Protocol has been established for the worship service of the Southern California Annual Conference Lay Organization Annual Spring Revival. Amen. Good evening, my name is Barbara McFeeters. Can I get everyone to stand who can please for the reading of the litany? Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. 
Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unremovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, for God so loved the world. Layman soldiers, strong in unity and love. Layman soldiers, strong in unity and love. Amen. Thank you. Good evening, all of my spiritual field sisters and brothers. I'm Sister Shirley Taylor, chaplain for the Fame Pasadena Lay Organization. Before we formally engage in prayer this evening, I'm going to ask you all to stand and bow your heads in silence and individually and personally thank God for what he has already done for you. Not what we're going to ask for him to do today or continue to ask, but thank him for everything he has already done for you. This is your private moment to come and praise him in your own way, in your own time. You don't have to clear it with anyone. Just bow your head, close your eyes, and take a second to just thank him for what he's done for you. If you don't thank him but for one thing, one thing is more than enough. Now, I want you to 
keep your heads bowed. It doesn't hurt a lot of times to close your eyes, so you have time to think and reflect upon the goodness of God. We need to keep our heads bowed so we can humbly honor God. Adorations of confession, supplemental, and thanksgiving. According to the first Samuel 1 15, giving and pouring out the soul. That's why we're here today. Do you know why we're really here? We're here for a revival. And we don't talk about revivals anymore. The old school people used to talk about it because it meant something. I would like to say we thank God and we praise him for the powers, our Heavenly Father's powers. Spiritual brothers and sisters, we need to take a moment and acknowledge and believe that there are no, no storms that God can't carry us through. No bridges that God won't help you cross. No battles that God won't help you to win. No heartache that God won't help you to let go of. Remember, God is so much bigger than anything you have faced or will face today, tomorrow, and beyond. Leave everything for his, in his hands with the confidence of knowing that God will take care of you. May God's blessings rest upon you this evening. May God's peace be with you and his joy fill your hearts. And Jesus Christ's precious and almighty name, amen. This time, we will have Brother Carl Settles of Bethel, Fontana. He's bringing us our scripture, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Good evening. I'll be presenting Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, NIV. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. May God add a word, God's word, for God's people. Amen. Amen. As the Right Reverend is pulling up a mic for our sister, uh, we are going to hear from a Sister Laura Terry, and she is uh, our wel uh, welcome committee. While he's handing that mic, I just want to say, for by grace I have been saved through faith. And this is not my own doing. It is a gift from God. Hallelujah. Good uh, evening, everybody. Again, we're overjoyed to be here in the house of the Lord again. You know, I would jump and do a jig. My pastor thought I was going to do one last night, but I maintained my cool because I let the Holy Spirit fill my soul a little bit later. But we welcome you here tonight. We are glad you came out. We are so proud to see all the loving faces for the second time and some for the first time. And so we're Welcome you to our service on behalf of the conference president, Mrs. Kathy Green, and the host pastor, Reverend Dr. Larry Campbell, 
Um, along with his first lady, Melinda Campbell, in absentia, I extend a jubilant welcome to our guests, family, and friends. Again, we are thrilled to see people return for the second night of revival. You know, last night we had 63 people online, and we think that's wonderful. And there were about 71 of you in the house last night. And there were, I counted over eight or nine pastors, and some are back tonight with the uh, uh, elder and the connectional officer over here with Jackie DuPont Walker. We are thrilled that you turned out for the lay organization to let us know that you are supporting our efforts. It is our prayer that you will receive a restoration of hope, a revived spirit of joy, peace and joy, that will renew and refresh your minds and soul to sustain you for the coming weeks. We come out here to revive ourselves after Resurrection Sunday to keep us going to know that the Lord has been good for us. Let the Holy Spirit fill you to overflowing. Be at home and may God's house be your house. Amen. 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 Yes. Uh, as, um, as it is time for the music ministry, this Holy Ghost Choir is going to uh, minister music to us again. Uh, then we will hear from Dr. Lance Williams for the worship of giving. I think our pastor wanted to say a couple of words. <laughs> My bad. I apologize. Uh, welcome. Uh, we'll come from Reverend Larry E. Campbell at this time. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. I, as a preacher, I talk enough, so hey, you know, if I don't get to talk, that's good. Amen? Amen. But I do want to give God praise tonight uh, for us being able to gather for our second night of the spring uh, laity revival. Amen? Amen? That the laity thought it not robbery that would bring us together right after resurrection that we may continue to worship and give God praise. Because God is a good God. Somebody says he's good all the time. And all the time he is good. Amen? Amen. So I want to do something a little different tonight as we I welcome you into the place. I want you to welcome each other. Because some of us come from a long ride from Los Angeles, California. That's a long ways from here. Some of us come from right down the road. But I want you to just stand up and say good evening to somebody. As African American people of culture, we speak to each other. So say good evening. Amen. Let's just break that quiet spirit. Let's just say evening, good evening, amen. Let's just loosen up a little bit, amen. Just loosen up a little bit, there you go, amen. We don't have to sit there all wound all tight. other into this place and welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. And so I greet all of you this evening with the joy of Jesus. And it's good to see all of you here this evening. Amen. A couple things I want to do this evening. First of all, I want to ask that all the members of fame Pasadena to stand. Amen. 
Amen. So on behalf of our membership, you are welcome. But thank you, Faye and Pasadena, for hosting. Thank you for the wonderful food. Thank you for the hospitality. Come on, let's give them a big hand. Amen. Then I'm going to ask that the organized laity of Southern California, would you stand? The organized laity. Amen. If you are part of the laity, stand. Amen. I want to say thank you for bringing back the laity revival. Amen. And thank you for putting it in this spot. And thank you for having it here. But thank you for giving us something else that we can celebrate God after the resurrection. Amen. Job well done, Sister Kathy, as the president. Amen. Come on, let's give our president a big hand. Then I want all the ministers, all the clergy to please stand. Laity, I want you to look and see as your clergy. I want you to look and see that as clergy, members of, of the preaching staff, uh, people who call out to serve and people who call out to pastor, we appreciate our laity, amen? amen. We realize that, that, that we can't preach by ourselves. We need to be able to preach to someone and thank God you come every Sunday, amen? amen. So we thank God for your support. We thank God for your love, oh, amen. Thank you, preachers for thinking tonight, Robert, to come out on a Wednesday night. Hey, Mom, let's give our preachers a big hand. I pray that this evening that you will be blessed. Perhaps someone has enjoyed the food, you're enjoying the worship, but I pray that someone will be reconnected with God tonight. Somebody will be reignited. Amen. Rekindle the spirit. And that's what revival is all about. Yeah, we come to get together in fellowship, but it's about reconnecting with God. Amen. Because guess what? Without him, we are nothing. But with him, we can do all things. Amen? So pray, pray that God will meet you tonight in that place where you really do need him. May God bless you tonight. And the people of God said amen. Amen.
How about a hand, everyone, for this fantastic choir? You're really getting this moment really charged up. We want you to be charged up for the Lord. We really want you to worship us, worship with us, the Lord, through giving. It's that moment. And so we bring our collection team up. And we are asking for a donation of $25, $25. And those of you who are online, your way to, you have two ways to give. The first one is through Givelify, and the name that you put in at the request is Southern California Annual Conference Lay Organization. That's Southern California Annual Conference Lay Organization. I'll say it one more time. Southern California Annual Conference Lay Organization. The other way that you may give is through Cash App. And the signature there is dollar sign S-C-A-C-L-O-5. Dollar sign S-C-A-C-L-O-5. Last time. Dollar sign S-C-A-C-L-O-5. So now, ladies and gentlemen, please be prepared to come forward, starting from the back, and just come and give to our ushers. because you had checks, we'll be back in the counting area. Okay, thank you. Amen, amen. 
Moving forward, we will have the introduction of our re revivalist, and uh, that would be Sister Monique Redman of Bethel, LA. And just following thereafter, we'll have the sermonic selection. Good evening. I'm going to be nice. In this setting, I'm going to be nice. <laughs> the Reverend Benjamin Thomas, Jr. Reverend Benjamin N. Thomas, Jr. received, this is the sad part, his Bachelor's of Science degree from Southern University, A&M right. in Baton Rouge. Presiding elder, he didn't go to Grambling. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I don't know about that. <laughs> They keep changing their blues all the time. But anyway, while at Southern, he participated in the Southern University Interdenominational Gospel Choir. Benjamin accepted his call after graduating from college. Benjamin was a dedicated member of the historic Tanner Chapel, Amy Church. In 2006, Benjamin started Generation Impact, innovative ministry positively anointed for Christ today. Which is, the, which is the young adult ministry at Tanner Chapel. Since serving in that position, he has developed several programs such as Study on the Go, which was a Bible study done over teleconference, Empowered for Impact College Ministry, New Song Praise Team, and the Young Adult, the annual Young Adult Conference, which has allowed him to work with gospel artists such as Tasha Cobbs, Dion Kipping, and gospel and Christian rapper Flame. In December 2012, Benjamin was assigned to be the minister of Chosen Generation, which is a youth ministry at Tanner, in addition to his Generation Impact ministerial duties. In his youth minister role, he rebranded the youth department now known as Chosen Generation Youth. While being the youth minister, he created TWIST, Teens Worshiping in Spirit and in Truth. This was a teen worship service that was held every first and third Sunday as well as being in charge of the youth weekends that had speakers like immediate past connection YPD president John Ingraham. The youth weekend brought over 70 plus kids and parents to their activities. In 2015, Benjamin created Impact Youth College Ministry at Historic Ch Tanner. Benjamin also served as the Phoenix Al Albuquerque District Youth Minister, where he was in charge of creating all of the youth programming at various district conferences. In October 2015, Bishop Theodore Larry Kirkland assigned Reverend Thomas as the senior pastor of A.K. Quinn AME Church in Moreno Valley, Moreno Valley, California, the jewel of the valley. Since becoming the pastor of Quinn, Pastor Thomas has overseen the addition of a new sound system, church renovation projects to modernize the sanctuary, and the addition of several ministries such as the youth ministry, liturgical dance ministry, as well as many other projects. Currently, Benjamin served as the first vice president of the Inland Empire Ministerial Alliance of the Southern California Annual Conference. Benjamin also serves on the planning committee, or he did, of the LA North District a Conference as well as the Epiphany Planning Team. In October 2017, he was elected the first president of the 5th Episcopal District Richard Allen Youth Adult Council, which allowed him the opportunity to travel the district to help set up other young adult ministries. He is also a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. In 2018, Reverend Thomas received his Master's of of Divinity Degree. I said I was going to keep it. I'm going to be good. I'm doing good. A Master's of Divinity Degree from Regent University. He has also been ordained an itinerant elder in October 2018 during the Southern California Conference. In November 2019, Benjamin was assigned to Pastor Bethel AME in Oxnard, California. <laughs> Since being assigned to Bethel, Benjamin has hit the ground running by being part of various committees and boards around Ventura County. Currently, he serves on the board for Clue Ventura County, the Police Chief Faith Advisory Council, Oxnard High High School District Black Education Steering Committee, and Ventura County GLTV, among many other things. He has served on the LA South Planning Committee, as well as the 5IT for the 5th District. 
Benjamin is not only the loving hu husband of, Tam of Tamara, but he's also the father of Samira Jean, Bryson and Benjamin III. He's the little brother to Mashana. He's, a, he's the son of Reverend Benjamin Thomas and my bad. But most of all, he's a child of God and my little brother. I've known him since he was wee high to the grasshopper. So this is an awesome moment for me. Um, so we're definitely going to be blessed tonight by the word of God from the man of God. And I present to you our, pre our preacher of the hour, the Reverend Benjamin Thomas, Jr. <laughs>
glory. I will do anything. That means that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get into the presence of God. And, and so we've come tonight on this night of revival to just press in the presence of God because we know that with the presence of God, there is liberty. So how about all of us just stand on our feet and just press in his presence because we all come sick and need something from the Lord. I don't know what you've come here today with, but we want you to leave here free. You might be sick, but we want you to come here and leave here free. And the only way that you can do that is if you press in the presence of God. Lord, we just want to be where you are. You're willing to do anything. That means coming out on church on a Thursday night when you could be watching your favorite show. But you know, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you don't know where you would be. You just come to just, just to feel his presence. We've got to be where. to 
receiving this gift of God that we call grace. See, grace is defined as an unmerited favor from God for salvation of your sins. That means that you get this gift even though you don't deserve it. Now, even though you keep sinning over and over and over again, God found it not robbery to give you this free gift that only God could give you. And on tonight, we, we're celebrating and we're reminding God to say thank you for the gift that you have given us that we don't even deserve. Thank you, Lord. We don't have enough money to pay for it. Yes, but because of God's grace and God's mercy, he gives it to us. Yes, Lord. And so we ought to just open up our mouth and tell God thank you. Yes, Church, when was the last time that you told God thank you? Thank you for waking you up this morning. Thank you for starting you on your way. Thank you for allowing you to have some portion of your health and strength. When was the last time that you told God, thank you? Matter of fact, when was the last time you told God, thank you for saving me? Thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for opening closed doors. When was the last time you said, oh yeah, oh yeah. Thank you. And Paul is reminding the church that yes, they have all of these gifts and talents, but God has given them something that they must say thank you. All right now. All right. Real quick, three quick points. First of all, he wants the church to say thank you for that the gift God that God saved you with. Yes. First point is the gift saved you. All right. Yes. All right. That means that. When you were out there in these streets. Mercy Father. Went out there kicking. <laughs> Hustling and chucking and diving on everything that you were doing. God still loved you enough. To protect you, even when you couldn't protect yourself. Why? Because you received this gift of grace the moment that you came to the altar and asked God to come into your, your life. You received this gift. We want you believe that that gift saved you. It covered you. It rescued you. Grace covered up your shortcomings. I know everybody in here got it all together, but, but some of us struggled in some areas that, that God had to give us grace in because we're still broken. Grace covers up our shortcomings, but even though God gives us grace, Elder, we have a problem with showing other folk grace. God has forgiven you over and over and over again, and yet you're still holding grudges on people. There's some folk in your phone right now that you don't talk to because you are unwilling to show them grace for their shortcomings. Yes. You can't say amen, say yes. <laughs> But I'm so glad, church, that we serve a God yes. that still loves us enough in our shortcomings to continue to show us grace and favor until we get it right. Yes. Yes. Then grace doesn't have limits. You know, we can keep swiping our car, our, our, our car, but after a while, we're going to have a limit on it. And it's going to go beep, beep, beep. <laughs> but this gift that God has given us, it knows no end. It has no no balance on it. it. It just keeps renewing over and over and over again. And, and even though we keep taking out deposits on it, God keeps 
putting extra credit on our car. And that is the reason for us to say thank you. The gift saved you then. Next of all, the gift is something you can't take credit for. We take credit for all kinds of stuff. Even stuff that we have no business taking credit for. But this gift we can't take credit for because only God can give it. And Paul wanted to remind the church that, yeah, you all that in a bad but yet there's still some stuff you can't give for. All right. You need God in order to receive this gift. Grace has it, a way of humbling you. Yeah. Even though you think you all that, and then you fall short and you know the areas in which you messed up in, yeah. grace has a way of humbling you because you realize you don't deserve God's grace. Yeah. <laughs> But because God loves you, Love you. Yes. Yes, Lord. you were able to receive you, this gift that you don't deserve. Yes. Then, Reverend Trump, you can't take credit for grace, but you can possess the gift. Yes, yes. <laughs> you can't give it to someone, but you can learn how to possess it. The gift that God has given you. You can know what it's like to live under God's grace. That means that you know that there is a reason why you can open up your mouth and praise the Lord because you know where you could and should be. And so because you possess the grace of God, that empowers you to do things you don't think you deserve. You can't give away God's grace, but you can pull back. God's grace. I told you I was going to be quick. The gift saves you. The gift is something you can't take credit for. And lastly, the gift came from the right person. Yeah, the gift came from the right person. See, we like gifts depending on who it comes from. Came from that person you don't want, what are you going to do? You're going to throw it over to the side. <laughs> but if it's someone who has value to you, if it's someone that you love, you appreciate the gift even more. And because God loved us enough, we appreciate the fact that God has decided to give us grace. Because we understand the giver has value. God has value yeah. to us. Why? Yeah. Because even when we didn't love ourselves, God still loved us. Yeah. Even when we couldn't care for ourselves, God still cared for us. Even when everyone else threw us away, God never threw us away. And for that, we have a reason to tell God, thank you. Yeah. 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 The giver has, has value. You, you know what God has done for you, what God has done for your, your family, and so the gift that God has given you carries some weight, because now you have an appreciation yeah, yeah, yeah. for it. Yeah. And it says, God wants you to have this gift so that you can be the example. Yes. All right. All right. So that you can tell other folk about your testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that God can see, so folk can see the God that's working in and through you and know that yes, God is real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we appreciate the, the, the person. We, we, we're blessed to be an example. We're called to be what God not peace here on earth. That means that you are called to be God's example of his grace and God's mercy. That's why you can't be mean and evil all the time. All right now. You can't be acting crazy in the Bishop Ward, the Stewart Ward, the Trustee Ward, me all the time. But you are called to be God's example of his grace and his mercy. Yeah. 
know that you still ain't doing stuff that same, and yet you holding against everybody else. You no, know, God told you to be the example because God's forgiven you over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Get on out of here. Thank you for the gift because the gift looks beyond my faults and it saw my needs. Uh, thank you for the gift that blesses me over and over and over again. Now, thank you for the gift that knows no limits, that knows no bounds, that I can't even explain or deserve it. Now, thank you for the gift that saw the best in me, even when everyone saw the worst in me, even when I didn't see it, that God, you still love me enough to give me the gift of your. A hymn writer said it best, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me now. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I'm seen. Grace that taught my heart to be right. And grace my tears to be I'm here. Thank you, Lord. The gift that was passed down from generation to generation so that I can now possess it for myself. Lord, thank you for the gift that encourages me to continue to fight on, to run on, to keep serving, even when I don't feel like it. Thank you for the gift that empowers me to do great things. Thank you for the gift that empowers me to keep on loving. Thank you for the gift that empowers Keep on serving. Thank you for the gift that continues to make an example out of my life. Church, don't forget to tell God thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your grace. Thank you. For your mercy. Thank you. For your love. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for keeping me. Where would you be without God's grace? Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Oh, somebody ought to just say thank you, Lord. God's favor, unmerited favor, the preacher said. Right now, as we stand on our feet, sure enough, the gospel of Jesus Christ has been proclaimed. And I want to take the moment to invite Christ into every life. If there's someone in the sound of my voice or watching online and you've never said, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. I want to invite you to come this day. Give the pastor your hand and give Jesus your heart. Secondly, tonight, maybe there's somebody who's already saved but is looking for a good church home. There are 52 congregations in our conference, and one of them would be just for you. If you're watching online, just put it in the chat. I want to get saved tonight. And I declare somebody will pray the prayer of salvation with you. If you're here today, simply come down the aisle and get a picture in your hand. Jesus, your heart is beat. Choir will lead us in a hymn of invitation. The doors of the church are open. Tap your neighbor on your left and your right. Say, neighbor, are you saved? Say, neighbor. You have a good church hall. They don't say yes, invite them to come.
Rachera, Reverend Rachera, pardon me, she nailed it. But you brought it on home. And at this time, I'd like to bring up our chaplain, Milton Bridgewater. You know, when I was tasked to put the revival theme together and have people to help with the program, I called Kathy up and asked her, what should we have for a theme? She said, you the chaplain, you handle it. <laughs> so I went in prayer, I wrote things down, I went in prayer, I wrote things down. I went in prayer and wrote things down. And he gave me Ephesians 2 and 8. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for grace. I think that that would help all of us so that we can continue to move on. Yeah. Continue to lift up everybody. If we just remember that we didn't deserve it. Lord Jesus. He gave it freely. Yeah. You couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it home. Yeah. You fixed it for us. Yeah. You fixed it for us. So on behalf of everybody who helped with the program, say thank you for thank you for the host. Um, and that's all I can say is just thank you. Sister Kathy, to the one who, whose leadership exemplifies the Great Commission, to the one that leads with integrity. We want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. And many more to come. As surely as we are the lay organization Saints of Zion, we know the difference between a cubic zirconia and a true diamond. You are a true gem. Happy birthday and many more. to know that you care 
and you love the lay organization. It's not about Kathy Green, that's what I always say. It's about these people that stand in the, that makes the lay organization. And I want to thank you publicly. Thank you so much for standing and being here with us. I have the best preside elder in the world. Preside <laughs> elder William, stay with me.
during the troubles, shall we say, and was able to see firsthand Chip's leadership skills. Just incredible man. And then, um, as many of us did, we some of us took a journey away from First AME for reasons that were not being discussed here, but we still continue to connect, hang out. So it came time for me, God said, you know, you gotta, you gotta go somewhere, man. It's not, it's not good enough that when Chip is being a visiting minister, you go and you spend time and fellowship. You, you know, you gotta find a home. So I said, I said, Pastor, where do you go? And he says, I go to Bryant Temple, Clyde Oden. And, and I had wanted to, I had wanted for many years, I had admired Clyde Oden for his professional life. But Chip Murray, by the grace of God, encouraged me to come to Bryant Temple. And when I finally got there after they fixed the streets and so forth, um, I found what I wanted. And to this day, if you're listening, Pastor Oden, I have a very, very best friend, good friend, close friend in Chip, in Chip Murray, but also in Clyde Oden because of Chip. Chip, Chip was a matchmaker for all of you. Okay? So in closing, I just say, <clears throat> keep good thoughts, <clears throat> stay positive. Think about what would Chip want us all to do at this moment. He'd want us to live in his example, do some really great things, and stay in grace. Amen. God bless all of you. If I may have Elder with our closing remarks. Amen. The church say amen. As we think about Chip, we appreciate God's gift also of everlasting life that the Lord gives us when we live lives of faith and trust in the Lord. To President Kathy Green, amen. My dear friend from many years now to the officers of the Southern California Conference, to the clergy and the organized laity brothers and sisters, uh, it is good to be here on behalf of senior presiding elder Roosevelt Lindsay Jr., who is out of town at this time. Uh, we just want to say what a wonderful time we've had for two nights, amen? amen. When we look at some of the young preachers in the conference and the wonderful work they're doing, Reverend Ray and Reverend BJ, we know that the Connection of AB Church is in good hands. Somebody say amen. amen. We want to invite you to come to two district conferences, the LA North next weekend in New Philadelphia. Bishop Few is preaching at 6 p.m. and it's hybrid at New Philadelphia. And the next weekend he's preaching on Friday night for the LA South District Conference at Christ Our Redeemer Irvine. So we want to invite you to come, more good preaching and doing the work of ministry in the district conference. God bless each of you. My name is Pasadena and host pastor. You all look wonderful. You always do it well. God bless you. Please stand for the lay benediction. May God bless us with the true spirit.